Guess what? A huge ocean might be hidden deep beneath us, about 250 to 400 miles down. And it's bigger than any ocean on Earth's surface. Scientists were listening to earthquakes deep within our planet and noticed how these shakes slowed down when passing through certain parts of the mantle. This suggested that water was there. Models and experiments led them to uncover the underground ocean. But this ocean isn't like the typical water you imagine. It's a lot crazier. The mantle is a thick layer between the Earth's crust and core. It consists of the upper mantle, the lower mantle, and a mysterious layer between them called the transition zone. Ooh. In the upper layer, we can often find a fascinating material called olivine, which got its name from a pretty greenish color. Olivine doesn't care about high temperatures and thrives in lava comfortably. It not only thrives, but it even makes up 50% of the entire upper mantle. We can find this stuff on Earth thanks to volcanoes. When volcanoes spew their magma out, all the minerals in it make their way to the surface. As magma cools and solidifies, it forms igneous rocks, and the minerals start to crystallize. Olivine is one of the first minerals to crystallize, and since there's so much of it in magma, it forms lots of crystals. Sometimes they're small, but sometimes they grow large and become very noticeable. We collect these large gemstones and use them to make pretty accessories and for other purposes, such as casting metals. But as we dive deeper within the Earth, about 250 miles down, things get strange for olivine. We enter the mysterious transition zone. The pressures get way higher, and the temperatures rise significantly. Here, olivine transforms into beautiful rock called wadsleyite and ringwoodite. Just like with olivine, we sometimes find them thanks to volcanic activity. Both are blue-green, with a beautiful glassy appearance. Unfortunately, they're exceedingly rare and small, so you can't make accessories out of them. They're usually studied in labs. But they can do something that olivine can't. Thanks to their structure, they can act like a sponge, soaking up water. Now, this doesn't mean that they're literally wet. Rather, wadsleyite and ringwoodite can store water components, hydrogen and oxygen, within their structure. Usually, up to about 3% of them are water particles. These two little guys play an immense role in our planet's geology. They influence how the Earth's mantle conducts electricity as well as its viscosity, or how well it flows. This affects mantle convection, plate tectonics, and even volcanic activity. Without these tiny crystals, our planet would be completely different. The world could be mostly underwater, with just a few mountaintops visible. They also help us better understand how water works in general. So the transition zone is special because it's hydrated. Here we come to the recent discovery, a massive underground water reservoir. Scientists try to understand how water behaves in this deep part of the Earth. They discovered that as water-rich ringwoodite moves even deeper into the Earth to the lower mantle, it can start to melt a bit. This means it can release a bit of water and then trap it somewhere underground instead of letting it move around freely. But this released water wouldn't really be in its liquid, solid, or gas forms. Instead, it would be chemically bound to the underground structures. So, it won't be an ocean in the traditional sense. But there might be a vast amount of water down there. This finding is super important because it changes the way we understand Earth's water cycle and resources. It turns out that water isn't just found on the surface, but also moves through hidden spaces deep inside the planet. Another fascinating thing we discovered about water is that it might exist in a mysterious fourth state of matter. Now, we're used to thinking of water in its three common states – solid, liquid, and gas. But under extreme pressure in tiny spaces, it can enter a mysterious force state known as tunneling. We discovered this strange behavior in the mineral called beryl. Within beryl, there are super small six-sided channels just about five atoms across. Turns out these channels act like tiny cages that can trap individual water molecules, like wadsleyite and ringwoodite. In these conditions, the water molecules start showing behaviors 
that are closer not to classical physics, but to quantum physics. Quantum tunneling allows particles to exist in multiple places at once or pass through barriers they shouldn't be able to. Imagine a ball that somehow ends up on the other side of a hill without climbing over it. It just goes through the hill. Hydrogen atoms in Burl are like tiny balls. Typically, each ball would sit in one specific spot. However, in the experiment, these hydrogen atoms didn't stay still. Instead, they were found simultaneously in multiple spots. Together, they formed a pattern that looked like two wavy rings. It's like water molecules got smeared around in a ring shape. This is a state of water that we've never seen before. It reshapes our understanding of how water behaves under certain conditions, and it has huge implications for biology. All these discoveries have everyone rethinking where Earth's water really comes from. Water is essential for life as we know it. About 71% of Earth is drenched in water, and humans are mostly water too. When we figure out how it appears in space and on planets, it will give us clues about how to better search for extraterrestrial life. One theory says that when Earth was forming, the materials that clumped together to make the planet already included water, or at least the ingredients to make it. Earth formed about 4.5 billion years ago. Our planet slowly emerged, thanks to gravity, from dust, gas, and rocks that surrounded our newborn sun. This material gradually came together to form the planets of our solar system. However, the young inner solar system was a scorching place, too hot for any liquid water to survive. It would have simply vaporized and escaped into space. But it's possible that water was trapped inside the rocks that initially formed Earth. Some of the Earth's original building block contained much more hydrogen than all our oceans combined. It would also explain how water molecules got so deep underground. Then, volcanic activity could have later released the water stored deep within, sending it into the atmosphere as vapor. This vapor would eventually cool down, condense, and fall as rain, filling the young Earth with lakes and seas. Another idea is that after Earth was formed, Water was brought here by wet space visitors, like comets and asteroids crashing into the planet. Long ago, the inner solar system was a wild and chaotic place, much like Brightside. <laughs> when the outer planets rearranged their orbits, this caused a ripple effect, which we now call the Late Heavy Bombardment. It sent a flurry of icy space rocks crashing through the inner solar system, many of which collided with Earth. For a while, scientists thought that this event and comets were a primary source of Earth's water. But then, we learned that comets have a different chemical makeup from the water on Earth. Then we looked at the asteroids. Their water closely resembles the water in Earth's oceans. Some of the samples even contained organic materials. There's also a chance some random planet helped us out. About 4.5 billion years ago, a Mars-sized planet named Thea is thought to have collided with Earth. It was a violent encounter that melted part of Earth's mantle and led to the formation of the Moon. Perhaps Thea also brought some water with it. And finally, Earth could have generated its own water. Chemistry says that hydrogen could react with molten rock in vast magma oceans to produce seas and oceans. It's also possible that all these ideas are true and Earth's water came from several sources. It complicates our research, but shows how dynamic water can be in space. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.